actor Dermot Mulroney starred in several TV movies before landing a role opposite Julia Roberts in a niche film called My Best Friend's Wedding nearly 20 years ago, perhaps you recall it. His career, meanwhile, spans three decades, roles in more than 70 movies, and now stars in the new CBS drama Pure Genius. He plays a veteran surgeon enlisted by a tech billionaire to work in a cutting-edge hospital, and here's just a taste. You okay? New scan of Margot's heart. Mm. It's worse. I don't know if I can do it. You're the best there is. You'll nail it. This isn't programming a computer. There's only one way to remove the tumor. In a million ways, it could go wrong. If my scalpel misses by a millimeter, I could puncture her heart, and we've lost Margot and the baby. What if I could give you a million chances to get it right? Dermot Moroni joins me now. Colleague. Yeah. Well, welcome back. Hey, how you doing? Thank um, you so much. This is, you know, if we've seen medical dramas of the past, just be to a degree of the past. Yeah. This is where medicine's going. This, and this show takes place about five minutes in the future. Yeah, yeah. Um, and uh, we're really proud of it because we're in the position to introduce these innovative techniques and procedures, uh, machines that we've never imagined or uh, imagined and thought would never work. Um, so we, and all of, all of what's in our show, we've shot nine episodes now. It's, uh, it's, it's real technology. Like, it just so hasn't really been put into the hospital room. So it does, ex I mean, this is, this is essentially where this is going. I had a chance to speak to the IBM CEO CEO yesterday. The company and what they're doing with Watson with as as it regards cancer treatment is is a remarkable thing and it feels like this is a show for that time. Yeah, and that that system is you know simply put is data management mm -hmm. um, and a lot of our um, you know episodes touch on that like how you get the most information so that you can make uh, the best choices. Um, I know you've I know you've talked about this as it regards import. This is not just entertainment for you. Yeah, this it's, is such, it's such a fine line, and it has been for all the number of decades that you mentioned. Um, that line between um, simply entertainment, yeah. entertainment with a little message, or the very few opportunities I've ever encountered where you actually are introducing new ideas or touching on Im really important topics in society. So this is one of those rare jobs where you can actually get behind it and believe in what you're doing beyond, hey man, I believe in entertaining people, I really do. And uh, you know, I've, I consider it privileged to have uh, been able to do that for so long. But on that rare occasion when you're entertaining and either informing or this is really suggesting where um, where the American healthcare system can go and opening doors uh, every episode. So uh, this is also, it seems like a, a show you can enjoy with the second screen open, Googling your way through. Absolutely. As you watch, I'm imagining a lot of doctors are gonna be hearing about the program the morning after. Friday morning, yeah. uh, they, uh, I'm, I guarantee you people will be calling their doctors to ask, how do I get that thing for my dad or my grandma or, you know. Um, if the question then becomes, to a degree, with regard as certainly as it regards technology, because it, this then spits us into a greater discussion of artificial intelligence yeah. and the worrisome nature, perhaps, of it. Is it is it coming for for all of us? Yeah. Is there will there be an opportunity to address the pervasive? nature of technology in our lives even as it saves those lives. Yeah, well what's so interesting about Pure Genius, I play a character who's uh, more of a conventional doctor, mm -hmm. although you learn early on that I'm fired from my last job for trying to cut around the system and try to use uh, uh, drugs that haven't been approved by the FDA and so forth. So uh, within conventional medicine, I'm kind of a renegade. It's the idea. Exactly the doctor that James Bell, this uh, high, the, the technology um, billionaire uh, wants somebody who's willing to to uh, work around the system, um, and we find ways every week of introducing real or soon to be um, uh, medical technology. And uh, as I said, is really a, a it's something we're really proud of. Fascinating stuff. Also fascinating. Uh, it's not just a hobby for you, the cello. Yeah. 
which confounded me <laughs> I know. as a child. So, and now with children of my own, I'm hoping they just go to the recorder and yeah. they don't go. It's a lot easier but, to but carry. But for you, I mean, it, and it's it's real. You're not just a cellist out here to banter with me and tell an yeah. anecdote. Like you're like legitimately a cellist. Yeah, no, I know. It's it's a little strange. It, um, I mean, it makes sense to me. I started <laughs> acting and cello in the same summer when I was seven years old. So I've been doing both really throughout my, throughout my life. Um, in the last eight or ten years, though, um, in a very unexpected way, mm -hmm. I um, joined an orchestra that scores um, the movies. So even next week, on my days off from Pure Genius, there are scoring sessions for a movie called Los Alamos that's yet to be released. Uh, Michael Cicchino is the composer and conductor that I uh, play for. So you so have a seat. You have a seat. I have a when? seat in Michael Cicchino's orchestra. I'm the eleventh chair cellist. Yeah. Um, we'd like to think that there are twelve cellists, but there's only eleven. <laughs> um, but I'm an expert level cellist. Sit down, sight read, play in tune, follow the conductor. Wow. Um, and it's uh, truly one of my favorite things. And so, uh, just so I'm clear, you played yeah. Inside Out. You did. You did. I did. I played in the orchestra on right. the score for Inside Out. Yeah. And Zootopia and uh, Mission Impossible three and four. Well, uh, the Planet Zootopia of the Apes. and inside. Okay, then yeah. I'm going to be the coolest dad of all because I know a guy who played cello. Yeah, and he just happens to be that guy in that show. With yeah, that thing and Zootopia. About that thing. If you can picture the DMV scene yeah. where the sloths Sloth, are yeah, uh, sure. running the show sure. and that particular cue, we could barely get through. The entire orchestra's laughing. It just goes. Burr, burr. Oh, that's you know, phenomenal. Like, if you see it again, you'll hear that it's mostly not music, right. um, oh. and that's really what makes a funny scene um, hilarious As in she, that uh, case. With an eight and nine year old in the house, it's fair to say I think I'll be seeing that scene just a, a few number more of times. times. But now you'll now future. you'll see like I'll what went it. into it. I'll enjoy um, it. Um, and uh, you know, there too, I must say, it's an honor to play with those musicians yeah. and to see close up how. Um, how movies are made uh, from start to finish. I have yeah. a feeling there'll be two uh, two young cellists inspired by Dermot Moroni. Hey man, Thanks that, for that would be a, that would be a thrill that. for me. Hey, what a pleasure! Uh, Thank you so much. Congratulations again. Thanks. You were here at CBS with the Sin of Innocence, that, and you'll thirty years for, later, they, you'll they, they the resistance the wore down and they have me <laughs> yeah, back, back at ten o'clock on Thursday nights. He's doing my work for me. <laughs> it's the series premiere after all. Pure genius. Thursday, ten. Let's not forget the folks in the central time zone, nine for you. That's right. Only on CBS.